what is up everyone so we are finally back from final bout as you guys know we went crazy all month trying to build tom a new chassis get this thing sorted to then drive to wisconsin to participate on our favorite event of the year final bout we came in second it was an amazing weekend i'm super proud of us and now it is time that we are home we can take a second to breathe and we can get back into the the chaos of things if you guys remember my good friend Brian Hall helped us tremendously throughout the build process and he really threw down to make sure we can get Tom's car ready in time and he busted his ass for us. And what I wanted to do before we got back into the chaos of things was do something that really showed my appreciation to him throughout this experience and just in general. So if you guys haven't seen this before on our Instagrams or on DJ's YouTube channel, uh, Brian is building himself his very first S13. We have officially turned Brian into an S-Jassy guy, which is pretty sick. And well, we've all thrown down over the last few months. Brian has worked his butt off and his car is finally starting to get somewhere. He's got this full KAT setup. The underneath is redone. We got him new arms, rear end, coilovers, everything. We got his interior looking pretty damn cool. And it's almost there, but he's at a little bit of a... He needs, a he needs help from, uh, from James, for sure. One of the last pieces of the puzzle here until we could hear this thing run is, well, wiring and electronics. You're, the, you're that guy. I, I know a guy, all right? So what I have here is a package for Brian to get his car hopefully running. So as you guys might be able to tell, we got Brian a wiring specialties harness and him fully stacked up on some link goodies. So this should be everything we need to get Brian's KAT running in his hat. So I'm very excited to do this for him. I didn't tell him yet, so when he gets off of work, we'll surprise him. I think he'd be pretty stoked because I know he's been stressing this big time. I'm happy to make this happen to him. So right here is a S13 SR harness out of Tom's old hatch. So, mm. We put a new harness in Tom's car because we didn't have time to mess around, but I've had time to go through the harness, verify everything's good. There's a couple things I gotta repair, but we're gonna lop up a lot of it anyways to make it work on his car. He has a KA, but we're using an SR harness. To go with that, we have, Brian, a nice Link Monsoon ECU. Probably one of the best bang for the buck ECUs you'll get on the market. This is one of my favorites. Perfect four cylinder ECU, perfect for Brian. And on top of that, I got him kind of all decked out. I got him a can gauge. So Brian only has to run one gauge and he'll get all the information he needs to make sure his car is safe on the track. I got him a can Lambda, which is Link's wideband sensor. Communicates to the ECU via can, so we can make sure well, it's tuned properly with the proper AFRs and then a bunch of supporting sensors to go around with it. So I got the boy hooked up. Very excited to do so. So uh, this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be modifying this harness, getting everything right so we can make Brian's car hopefully run in this video. That would be really nice. FedEx showed up really late today, so we're starting a little late. So let's get to work. All right, so Brian has himself a KA. One of the things, one of these things right here. But we're gonna be starting with a harness for, well, an SR. One of these things right here. They don't make a plug and play for the KA, but they do make a plug and play ECU for the SR. So if you don't want to use a standalone like I got with the Monsoon, you could move things around so you could run an SR plug and play on a KA. KAs have distributors, right? You don't see it because it's usually sticking out here, which means if you want to run smart coils on your KA, which you should, if you're boosting it, you have to pull wires out of your ECU, which is fine. You could do that on a plug and play, um, but that's more wires you have to run. It won't look as nice and it's a pain in the butt. But with an SR, they use smart coils, right? There's four coil packs in here. So those are already pinned into the harness. And on top of that, Nissan the Nissan here, almost all the sensors are in the exact same location. And they share a lot of similar sensors. So realistically, to make an SR harness fit on a KA, we only have to move a couple things around. Big cheat code. Now the big question is, why did I go with a plug and play ECU, which is me to plug into the factory connector here, like the factory ECU? The reason why I went with Monsoon is, well, it's more cost effective. It's as easy as that. Like I don't, you know, I'm here for the boys. I'm trying to save you guys some money here. So if you're willing to put a little bit of effort in, you can save yourself some money. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how we're gonna pin in our standalone Monsoon to save ourselves a couple extra bucks without having to sacrifice almost anything. Long story short, Jimmy's trying to save you some money. Hop below, shop him, yo. That was good. <laughs> First thing we need to know is the pin out for the harness. We need to know where all these wires go, because if we don't, then... Useless. Yep. Useless, right? We have the pin out for the harness right here. Now this is basically the same as a factory ECU pin out, but since this is wiring specialties ECU, they have their own pin out for it, which is actually easy to read. So this sheet right here off of wiringspecialties.com tells me what every single pin on the ECU does. 
I could take it, move it around, and plug it in where it needs to plug in on the standalone. So we're connecting the dots here, all right? Square and square hole and a little round in the round hole. Even though the, the round hole will fit in the square hole, you gotta be careful, you know? <laughs> and up next, a cylinder. Hmm. A circle. I think that goes in the circle. The square hole. So luckily all the wires are color coded and matched to our pinout, right? So we can kind of glop this thing off like a barbarian and go from there. But the one thing that isn't color coded is all the grounds. They're all different, right? And you gotta remember, we have sensor grounds, we have like generic grounds, and then we have our shielded grounds from our triggers, right? So I'm gonna mark all of those grounds first so we know the difference. All right, good thing I didn't lop it off yet because we're at a rush here. There's a couple of things that share the same color. So before I cut them, we're gonna mark them what they are. All right, so there's a couple of things like we have our TPS sensor, shares the same wires, our auction sensor, so we have those marked up. And then our trigger one, which is our cam and crank, they also share the same color. So those definitely can't be mixed up. So take your time and look at your wire colors. Okay, there we go. Yep, we don't need you. Get out of here. We don't need this connector. We don't have time for this connector. Save money by buying them on soon. You like that, Jordan? No, this just gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more grounds. All right, a little quick haircut. I like your cut, G. <laughs> you like that? All right, boom. Now we have no connector, right? Now we have to put a connector on it. That works with the Link standalone. So, get the we got box. right here. Link A plug. Boom. Now what we're gonna do is, well, put these to where they belong on the standalone ECU. It's as easy as that. Is it? So we're gonna start with the easy stuff first so it makes it look a little less overwhelming. So we're gonna start with the coils and the injectors, right? Those are only one wire coming from each, easily on the pinout. So let's find injector three, right? So fuel injector three, that's gonna be a green and black wire. So we find that green and black right here. And just to confirm, injector three, pin 103, just right here, yep. Green with a black stripe in it. I know I didn't leave much, but perfect. And then injector four is L. What is L? Loser. <laughs> what color starts with L? <laughs> Lavender. 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 Let's see. So 112 right here is L is 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 blue. So maybe it is lavender. Oh, it's L and B. So it's a uh, blue with a black stripe. <laughs> oh god, there's multiple of those. Oh, we're good, there's, there's just one. Yeah, so we're looking. Here we go, right here. So boom, we have our coils and we have all our injectors. So let's pin these real quick. We take the pin for the link plug, the wire in there, and then we smush it. Just like that. All right, let's do seven more. Now that they're pinned, these wires will slip into our link connector, right? So let's look what we have. We have ignition, ignition signal one, which is red and white. And then we need to find it where it's pinned on this, on the link one, so uh, ignition one. So that's pin 13. One, two, three, four. Slip it in. Boom. Make sense? Easy as that. Easy as that. All right, I pinned these real quick because they're easy to get out of the way. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of things that we're not gonna be using anymore. There's some AC stuff in here. He doesn't need a check engine light. No, we don't need that where we're going. No, we don't need that. Small stuff like that, just to try to make this thing simpler. So, gonna have to mark things that I'm gonna not use, and I'm gonna pull them out, get them out of the way for now. All right, let's we'll see. Well, this wire is in front of my face, red with yellow, or yellow with red. That's TAC output signal. So this will send a signal to Brian's TAC, so his factory TAC works, which I can, I can assume that he wants, and so. The TAC is gonna be controlled by an AUX in ECU, so we have to find an open AUX on this list. We'll start with AUX1. We'll pin it in there. Make sure we write it down. You need to write down where you put everything so when we define it in the ECU, we know where everything is. Make sense? some assumptions but I think we're good here I think we have everything we need to, to make this work in here so only thing I added was I added a I stole a switch 12 volt from the harness uh, a, stole a ground and then I did a can high 
and the can low for the ECU plug. So now I can put a pin here. We could use this to plug our can gauge and our can lambda into without having to cut into the harness, which is really nice. I'm gonna wrap that up and we're gonna assume that everything works mint, right, Jordy? We're gonna cross our fingers. I don't know, I've usually, I, we've gotten really lucky. It's very rare that a harness hasn't worked on this channel. Um, but I did kind of rush this one, but I'm confident. No, no. So we have a couple extra spots in here that isn't pinned, which is nice. So we have a couple extra functions we could do and there's a couple extra sensors that we could add if we need them. Like if Brian wants to add like a fuel pressure sensor or something that didn't come in the factory harness, we could always loom that through or just run a sub harness off of the EC, which is really nice. The monsoon's not maxed out, which is good. So let's tape this up and finalize this. So we feel done and then we'll move on to the next uh, task task ta-da you would never know this thing was so violated right so we have the plug that now plugs into the monsoon which looks comically small compared to the oem plug isn't that ridiculous that thing thick then we have the interface plug and then of course the plug i put on for our can good all right let's figure out what we have to switch now on the sr harness to make it plug directly into a ka24 de now you're probably wondering, Jim, I don't have a K harness to cut the plugs off of. What do I do? Uh, well, Wiring Specialties sells all the, OEM all the OEM connectors you need. They sell it with flying leads and they sell it with just the pins so you can pin it so it looks fresh, clean OEM like you never cut into anything. So, got my box, got a bunch of connectors, anything from any type of OEM connector, Nissan, Mazda, Toyota, whatever you need. And of course, just generic DTM connectors for pinning aftermarket stuff in. So. Look at that, wiring twisty saves the day once again. So the first thing I'm gonna pin in is a new connector for the boost controller. Not that it needs to be different, but Tom had this thing kind of hacked into, and I don't want Brian to feel like he got a second-hand harness here, so we're gonna get this thing all fixed up. And uh, we're gonna just use a generic Deutsch connector, which is nice, it looks very motorsporties, just a two pin. And uh, we'll put the other side on the boost controller, and it'll look all fancy and clean. There we go, we love that. See? Fancy, huh? All right, so there, there isn't a ton that we need to switch, which is really good on this harness, but we're gonna go through them real quick and uh, bang them out. So the first thing is a starter signal. Now the SR starter has a little slip-on connector right here, which is kind of whack because they slip off all the time. And then the KA starter actually has a plug. So we're gonna actually swap these over real quick. Ta-da! And look at that, brand new OEM. Starter signal wire plug. Huh. Nice. Right? Yeah, you know your Nissans. Yeah, some of them. <laughs> I've been hyper focusing on that, but uh, Brian just showed up from work, so I'm gonna surprise him, show him the ECU, and hopefully puts a smile on his face and take some weight off his shoulders because uh, no one likes knowing they still have to spend all that money to finish their car. Gave you the boot. Yeah, what the f <laughs> <laughs> So what's, what's left on this pig? Um, besides the whole exterior, which is whatever. Um, needs a harness mm -hmm. and an ECU and a little tiny bit of exhaust work. I don't think it needs the ECU anymore. Oh, no way. Ah, look at that. See, look at that. Freshy. This is good. I like the little guy. I love the my, my uh She goes, I like the little guy. <laughs> well, the ECU for my V8 is like oh, crazy ECU. Yeah. So Perfect. I like the little guy. Oh. You happy? That's sick. Yes, I'm happy. Does that help motivate you a little bit more? That helps motivate me a little bit, yep. And uh, the harness is like 80% done. What, you've been working on it? Yeah, I've been working on it all no day. Way. Yeah. I think it's at the point now if we get the wiring plugged in everything, get some fluids in it, it should be able to run. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. There's a couple small Hell things yeah. I gotta do. Well, yeah, some buttoning up, but you know, you don't gotta have all the coolant lines in, tighten the fuel lines, you know? The pump. What was that? We'll hardwire the pump. No, we, we got, got to hardwire the pump. No, we we, wire the, we, we do just got to do the relay on it. Okay. We're getting there, B. I got it. I got Dude, this. How'd you guys get this table so nice? I'm sorry, I should focus on the harness, <laughs> but this looks really good. <laughs> WD-40, Scotch Bright, and a spoon. Oh, it looks great. So All right. this is pin for the monsoon now. Oh no way. And then I. So what? Oh, because it was a plug and play SR20. Yeah, so I cut that off, and then we got the plug for your can system. Mm -hmm. Cool, we don't need to find switch power on that. Oh, I got you. There we go. These are the fun bits, too. Link can gauge, fire. That is cool. And a link lambda. So this one's for like oxygen sensor. Yep, that's wide band. Yeah. 
And then this one will tell me any information the ECU already knows, right? Exactly. You don't need any gauges. It's just that one. One gauge. And you can see literally everything. This is why everyone who drifts just puts a sticker right over their cluster or whatever. Yeah, because you don't need it. Because <laughs> all the info you need is there. But uh, I wired in your tack, so your OEM tack will work. That that, that's cool. nice to see. That is, yeah, because I like I have a good cluster in the car, mm -hmm. so it would be nice to have that. Everything else will refer to the gauge. That's cool. Very, very. All right, cool. so I'm trying to detom this as I go. So next thing is the intake air temperature sensor. It's not that it needs to be swapped because of its. Um, it's not because it needs to be swapped because it's SR to KA. It's because we have a link aftermarket intake air temperature sensor, and well, Tom messed all the wiring up. So I cut back all of Tom's wiring to my two sensor wires right here, and we're gonna bring it forward and pin it for where did I put the connector the link pin which is just a two pin Deutsch so uh let's make this look good ready boom look at that link IAT installed and more detoming that's good <laughs> <laughs> next connector we have to change is going to be the TPS because well SR TPS doesn't plug into a KA TPS it would be nice if they did because it would make things a lot easier for all of us. Nissan, but Nissan, and with, Nissan, yeah, Nissan, whatever. whatever. Uh, but I got the KA one from wiringswitches.com. Easy. So we're going to pin this right there. here. We'll have a working TPS, which is extremely important. Okay? Honestly, pretty amazing that wiring specialties will sell you this. Like, what other company is like, eh, we'll let you save money by just buying the parts from us instead of... Yeah, most companies be like, dude, screw you, buy our harness. Yeah, like, figure, <laughs> out, figure out where to buy it yourself. No, that's pretty awesome of them. Don't forget what the wire colors mean. Did you forget? <laughs> no, just like that. SR to KA. Boom, just three wires move around. It's nice when you just have the pins because it doesn't look like you cut into anything, splice anything. It just looks like it was originally there. Just nice and clean. So, cool, we're moving on. There's not much of the harness left. You see this? Exciting stuff. So, big thing is the CAS or on a KA, there's a distributor. Inside the distributor is a cam angle sensor, right? Yeah. So. If you delete your distributor to run smart coil, you still just basically delete the cap and rotor and the wires that go to it, but the sensor inside stays and it now acts as your cam angle sensor. And I believe the plug is the same for the 13. I, we, I think we checked, I think but it maybe, maybe we screwed up. Should we go check? Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is the rarest 13. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. The chance to see this thing off Jack Stent is right <laughs> Services. Oh, yeah, yeah that's that, the one. See, Nissan, you did some things there. So, SR, gas plug, plugs right into, I think it's a S14 distributor. Dude, I don't know. There's two distributors S13, S14. I know, but this one we built this out of a box. Yeah, one of them has. Yeah, the box in the back of my shop. <laughs> <laughs> now, the only thing that's really different is the wiring for the IAC. Now, we're not going to use the factory IAC because it sucks. We're going to put like an aftermarket one, like a Ford one on it because they're a lot better. So that I'm just putting on a generic connector. But besides that, I mean, I thought we had a lot more to do, but ta-da. <laughs> SR harness turned into a KA harness. It's, okay, one more thing. So, coil packs, right? What coil packs do you do on, on the KA? Now, the big thing is the K-Series, like the Honda K-Series coils. They're super cheap, they work great, and they fit in the KA head beautifully. So, you could either, you know, you could either take your SR coil pack harness and just depin it, right? These four, just put K-Series plugs on there, which is easy, that's no problem. That's just 16 things you gotta crimp and change. Or wiring specialties could save you some time and they already sell it for the K-Series. So they'll, they, all of their ignition coil sets on the harnesses have a sub-harness, so you could just swap them out between the KA, the SR, the RV, the JZs. And so, what do you look for? The plug. Yeah, is that it? It's right here. See? Yeah. And so I was able to go on their website and then they have an option for like all the generic smart coils that people use. And look at that. Plugs it right in, there's a ground on it, and we could plug Brian's K-Series conversion kit in without having to do anything. That was a lot simpler than I thought. So, just like this, the harness is officially detommed and fully converted to run a monsoon on a K24. That's cool. It's sick, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm hyped. So, I didn't realize there was that little of connectors to convert it, which is really, really cool. Um, the only big thing we didn't do is the IAC plug, the idle air control valve. Now for us, we don't. I don't like using the OEM one. I, don't, I think it kind of sucks. 
And so we're gonna pin it for an aftermarket one, which will probably end up running a Ford one because it's a whole thing, but whatever. So the last big thing is coil packs, right B? So we're going from an engine that has a distributor to an engine that's now gonna be running smart coils. And well, there happens to be one smart coil that fits in the head of the KA extremely well. The Honda K series coil, the K24, dun, dun, dun. It was fake. They fit great, they're super cheap, they work awesome, and you can't beat it. So, what do you do? Take the SR coil pack right here, and you know, they're all, they're just three pins, right? So you could do all four, it's 16 pins, boom, convert it to K-series, no problem. Or you could save yourself some time and, well, unplug this because they make all their harnesses module at wiring specialties, and get yourself a K-series conversion one because they make all of the, well, all the generic smart coils you could buy, they basically make a conversion for all of their engines, all their harnesses, whatever. So plug it in. Boom. Thank you, wiring specialties, for saving me time. So just like that, Brian, guess what? You officially have a harness that is met for your Turbo KA and uh, meant to plug into a monsoon. Happy man's? Happy man. That's me. That's my name. Happy to hear it. <laughs> this is exciting. That. Shove that in there. Yeah. Sound like that. Look at that. Plug her in. It. Hell yeah. Nice. Brian's first drive. You got it, Bry? <laughs> <laughs> Pushing drift cars suck. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. All right, well. This one's going to finish up the exhaust, a couple more bits, and, uh, well, how to get this thing running. It's close, but we still got a lot of work ahead of us, but. Why am I so out of breath? It's so pathetic. Um, that was a lot of work. Okay, thank you okay. for confirming that. Okay, yeah. yeah. God, this thing looks so cool in here. Um, I need to do S chassis tandems with Brian this year. It's gotta happen. The universe has been waiting for us to happen for many years. He's been a big Beamer guy. We've done Beamer tandems together, but S chassis tandems, it's different, right? This feels good. Yeah. We did do have some really good Beamer tandems, actually. Oh yeah, for sure. Pick a color for this thing yet? No. So don't tell me, I have, I have an idea. <laughs> I, have an idea. <laughs> I gotta get home, because if I get home after nine o'clock again, Steph is gonna kill me, so <laughs> we'll finish up tomorrow. Later in the void. All right, boys, so we're making some more progress here. I had Austin editing this morning so we get the video up on time, and I've been going ham on this thing, trying to, one, reacclimate myself to see what Brian has done and what isn't finished, and two, uh, I've been trying to tie up any loose end I could possibly find. Luckily, I know these things so damn well that I don't have to think, I just do. I got the fuel system finalized, everything's good, everything's tight, everything's ran. Um, vacuum lines are all good to go. Everything's rooted, the wire harness, everything should be there. We still have to put a intake air temperature sensor in it, um, and so I have to put the wide band in it, but I gotta wait for splitting the weldos up, which is no problem, but we could run the car without it. Really wanna hear this thing run today. I know it's actually, it's, it might not look it, but it's, it's a big stretch, but I know Brian really needs it for some mid-build automation. And one, ah, this is a mystery engine. So <laughs> this is just some random KA? It, every K is a random KA. <laughs> <laughs> There's no not random K. I don't care if I, oh, who's my car running? It's still a random KA. So, so I tied the chassis into the alternator. Then we bridged the alternator to the starter. And now we need to run the starter to the batter, right? We could do a little bridging here. Problem is, they didn't relocate the battery yet, which is my least favorite thing to do ever. <laughs> so I gotta see if Brian wants to route the cable through the car or underneath the car. And then we can hook up the battery and I can start doing things. So if we run out of time, I can break some stuff up, okay? Well, I texted Brian and he said, you know what, Jimmy, my loving, caring, handsome best friend, I, I trust you with any bit of your judgment. Nah, he just said, I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get this over with. Part sucks. What the f is this, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about people who own KAs. They just be painting random parts crazy colors. I think it's a KA thing. <laughs> All right. Brian, we're making moves, buddy. We're making moves. We're moving down. Yeah. Slowly. Battery cables ran. The whole charge system's char done. Grounded everything. That's crazy. I plugged in the alternator right in. Um. Did you fill it with oil yet? Not yet. There was no oil filter on. Good thing I noticed. I have a brand new OEM oil filter. Oh, I just put a Fram one on. Whatever. Uh, everything was loose. Yeah, all, none of these fuel lines are Your tight. Oil lines, nothing was tight. I was going to take this stuff off and blow it out with a hose. Okay. Yeah. The, the whole fuel system's done. Um, is there gear oil in it? No. Is there diff? Is there a reason why your valve cover's not fully mounted? Does that have to come back off? I'm missing half the bolts. Uh, that's good enough for me. Just 
just to start it. <laughs> Dude, there's there's no sparky sparks. I have no plugs in the fucking thing. I, was, I didn't even have a fucking engine harness yesterday. What's the <laughs> what do I need plugs for? Dude, you got some spark plugs. Dude, plug? make yourself useful. Come on, spark plug. <laughs> so there's one plug that ties the chassis, the engine harness, into the chassis in the inside. It is nicely wedged. <laughs> Completely in the wrong spot. I don't want to pull this dash out. You want to pull this dash out? Hell no. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I got it. Found it. Yeah. Ooh, I finally get to open up our blink monsoon. Choo -choo -choo. One little plug. Nice and water resistant, light, easy to mount, put it out of the way, super clean. And we have our built-in seven bar map sensor. Look at that. Vacuum line right. Seven bars, bro, so you can make all the boost. Dude, I don't need seven bar. <laughs> That's a lot of boost. <laughs> well, time to find out if I f this thing up or not. We usually get pretty lucky. Right? Yeah, that's what you say. Dude, it's not lucky when you connect 25 wires. That's not luck. Oh, I got lucky 25 times and it worked. <laughs> okay, well, I wasn't just throwing darts at a board with my eyes closed. That's what I'm but... saying. You give yourself some credit. It's not... right, to be honest, That's skill. I don't think I've ever had like something I wanted not work. This is what I'm rigging up, all right? It's not much of a rigging. You know what I mean? It's just like a battery terminals. Nah, that'd last a track day. It's fine. I'll be good. <laughs> I think this is how we start most cars. <laughs> <laughs> Remember guys, your engine runs, your, even if you're out of gear, your transmission's spinning, so you don't want to do it with the transmission dry. So fill it up if you're going to start your car. Squeeze bags for the gear oil was the best invention, invention of the gen, of our entire generation, actually. Best thing since sliced bread. Time for it to get everywhere. Oh, 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 shit, shit, shit. Ah. So Brian, talk to me about the history of this engine. Oh, unknown. <laughs> now this one, uh, you know, obviously this came out of a running and driving car right, with low miles um, and was rarely ever beat on. The true <laughs> history, only God knows. <laughs> Bought a lot of Mystery K8s. I've had a lot of bad times. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm being what optimistic. What kind of foreshadowing, uh, optimistic <laughs> foreshadowing is that? I've been real pessimistic this whole video, but I need to, I need to change that around. Four gallons of 110 octane coming right up. Yeah, boy. I did. <laughs> now you gotta make Tom paint this car. I think that's a fair. Dude, that wouldn't be fair, you f it all up. <laughs> <laughs> if I did it right, it should crank. No way. That starter. It's getting signal, so I did that, right? Ready? Did you hear it for a second? Yeah, I did. I don't think I've ever been successful once hitting it with a hammer or a starter. Not one time. Really? Bro, my Saturn? Every time. Hit it with a hammer. Hey, Steph, can you turn the key? I gotta go to work. Uh. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. I'm sure it'll work. Okay, get this out of here. Dumbass starter. Well, we might as well test out of the car just to verify we don't have a grounding issue on the car. Yeah, starter shot. Uh, which one? The nicest looking. Uh, looks right. It's gonna be. SSR. This is okay right here. Looks better. Or is that RB? Fuck, it's RB. I think. There we go. Cool. Yeah, you know. yep. You're gonna crank. Ready? Yep. Holy. I shut it off. Oh, I don't yeah. know how much you want me to crank. No, I'll let it crank. Well, that's cool. I mean, it's breaking a little slow. 
Cranking a little slow. Probably got, should add another ground to it or something, but or check the grounds in the rear. But the, it wasn't the wiring. It wasn't the wiring. Now the big thing is my laptop turned on. I thought you bought a new one. I did, I just I think lost it. I think it's in the, tr I don't know, the track or something. This was the first thing I saw. Oh! Died. Just enjoy this commercial. Hell yeah. Let's test some like stuff. You guys want to keep your eyes on for. Uh, Go ahead, just uh, me down with some fuel. fuel. Yeah, fuel leaks. Oh, that worked. No pressure. 42. It's somewhere close to that. That's a win. I'll take that. <laughs> oh, this is all pinned and whatnot. It's good to go through and test everything. So we're gonna test injector. So I'm gonna start with injector one. D Rock, let me know. Yup. Two. Yup. Three. Yup. Yup. And you see how easy it is to test things with a link ECU. Testing attack. Yep. That's it. 1,000. That's good news. That is good news. Now it is time to do the step of setting base timing. All right, we got a, we, the EC. Why are you walking so far away? I'm just being safe. Um, <laughs> so, of course, setting timing is making sure that the timing that we're commanding by the ECU is what's actually applying to the engine. Right, you got to sync the two together. If the engine cranks all like this, which honestly, it's just a freaking K and you something. Um, if you take the plugs out, it cranks a lot faster and it makes setting base timing the first time a lot easier. Do you see anything? Uh, I can see the flashes, but no, it's not near any mark. So do you have like a white marker that we can mark this? Yeah. What happened to Gingerly? Ginger? I gotta use magic. Ginger? Ginger? Oh, yeah, I'm, hold on. Yep. I'm talking. On the money. Uh, give me a micro ginge. Give me a, a, a smidge, and I mean a smidge. I got it, I'll go on it, I'll go on it, I'll go on it. That wasn't a micro. Give me one, so I can, oh, is that the correct one? Yeah. Do you know from experience? Yeah, it's negative five. I'll see you it's All so right. nice having characters on to run back and forth, and he gets to talk shit to these two. Yeah. Wow, I asked for gingerly and I got fucking... I tried. Not <laughs> you got the whole thing. Yeah. I got the Hulk. Alright, give it a shot. You want to switch positions here? You got them old eyes. That's true. I would love to. Alright, so we're at like 65 degrees. How did you find that? What? Because my eyes work. Good eyes and good fingers, I'll take it. That's it, so that's the winning combo. Just guess some random number for fueling and uh, start her up. Woo All right, that's two cylinders. Um, we might have the firing order wrong. We might have the firing order wrong. Ew, that means we have to reset base timing. That's, That's why it's fucking 55 degrees yeah, out. That sucks. sucks. Whatever. We set base timing to, to the wrong cylinder, and we just did math <laughs> <laughs> to assume where it's at, because we don't want to set base timing again. Just, yeah, try and start the thing, see if it works. Oh, it wants it. No, no okay, let's set timing. Might as well. Okay, All right, so. We should have tested coils to start. Remember you told me not to, you motherfucker. I'm blaming you. <laughs> You're like, no, there might be a little gas in there. Don't test the coils. This would have saved us an hour. All right. I'm blaming Derek. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, he did it. Thank you. Love you, Derek. Uh, fire it up. What fire. are we talking about? Yeah, fair <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're at 360. Right, Derek? 360. Now, now it'll start. <laughs> That's sick. I can't tell if it just sounds like a K or if it's misfiring. I think we fire it up and figure it out. <laughs> Such a dork, bro.
The motor, uh, even though it ran for 10 seconds, sound, sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. Yeah. It's the best sounding K I ever heard. <laughs> wow, that was cool. That works. I'm happy. Very happy. The car sounds good. So um, that might make you think the car's almost done, but it's not. We still got a lot to do. But next up is to get Brian on his first little test drive with it, which we can make happen. So big win today. Very happy. Link Monsoon. Kicks ass. K-A-T. Coming soon. Do the honors. You want me to click it? Do the honors. Uh, this is pretty exciting. Look at that. I'm smiling. Let me get the jump pack. Is there uh, juice? We need juice. Test two. Heat. Oh, that sounds better. Oh, God. Like, dude, there's 50 exhaust leaks. Nothing's welded, and it still sounds good. What? It's bad. Yeah, we were we were anticipating some not so good sounding noises, but it sounds good. Sounds and good. it was smooth. It was smooth. There's no whip. Yeah, you're right. You're right. None you're of good. that. I mean, we got new everything. What the heck? Not bad. Yeah, but I wasn't expecting it to like sound that good. <laughs> not like I don't know. Bought this motor for 600 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I never looked at the timing, never did nothing. <laughs> I put a front and rear seal in it and put it in the car. I think it's time that you got some good luck with the motor. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, it's good. I've been doing some little stuff here and there. Got the boost control all wired up and mounted. Yeah. I got. I made you uh, like a can system harness, so the can lambda and the can gauge all plugs in. Happy health, we can get those yeah. going. So we gotta get that bung walled in. Full of can lambda, which is fire. This is the oxygen sniffer. I don't want to wire in a fan controller. I don't want to do it. I'm going to have to do it. Plug in your last cooling leak and maintaining operating temp is always the next step. And then I guess from there, it's hooked up enough that we could probably drive it, which is super exciting. So, great. You feeling good? Yeah. So I'm thinking... I'll be like this to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking... Brian takes the day off tomorrow, so we just get a car down. Um, <laughs> I think we should put your windshield back in, even though it's not painted. Like. Yeah. Because we know a good glass guy. You know, yeah. Come down. Uh, test the car like this. Get some seat time out of it. Get some laps in it. <coughs> yeah. No. See, he's down. I got it on camera. That's all I wanted to Honestly, hear. Honestly, I have several versions of Tom's old body kit we could just screw to the side of the car. Yeah, we now. have Tom's last two cars worth of body. Uh, somehow, Brian ended up with his last car when it was orange. Those panels are all right. The, the car that got totaled, some of the panels are all right. I think co collectively we can... It's gonna look like a freaking pumpkin car. We could take Tom's old doors, put them on here, so you have the front street livery. <laughs> you would have, obviously, most of the front street of livery. Yeah. All right, we got some button up to do, but for now, hope you guys are hyped. We got some major progress on Brian's car. We're gonna try to bang this out super quick. I know S chassis content, it definitely wasn't playing for the last month and a half, but duty calls, man. Get all the boys to the tracks. So we can all have some fun together. Um, but for now. You guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content, B. Have a great night.